But a good time to uh, welcome our management and that of RVNL. Remember, in the past one year or so, the stock has done very, very well with that rail theme. The question is, how does the year pan out and what's the way ahead from year on? Mr. Pradeep Gaur, the chairman and managing director of the company, joins us on the show. Good morning, Mr. Gaur. And first of all, a happy Diwali to you, your family and your entire team at RVNL. Well, getting to the numbers in the first First half of the year, you'll have done closer to around 10% growth, which is something that you were guiding for as well. But you also mentioned that maybe the growth on the profitability will be far better. So at the halfway mark, you know, could you tell us for the year, what are you likely to grow by, both on the top line and more importantly, on the operating profit and pat front? Can you do 10% or more even there? And good morning and thank you for your warm Diwali wishes and my wishes to uh, you and uh, each and everyone in CNBC. Thank so uh, as far as uh, half yearly results are concerned, uh, we have, as you rightly mentioned, we have grown, uh, grown by around 10%. And uh, while our profits have increased by almost 20-21%, uh, and uh, this trend will continue. And uh, we are very confident that in uh, balance six months, the bottom line will improve even further because uh, more and more portfolio is now coming from the projects which we have taken on bidding, where the mm -hmm. margins will be uh, better than uh, what we have in the projects which were taken on assignment from Ministry of Railways. So I'm, I'm very confident about it and things will move because the margins will be better in that compared to uh, the other projects. Okay, so, so top line growth of more, a little more than 10% or more and operating profit and profitability for the year will grow by more than 10%, right, sir? Yeah. Did we get that correct for FI24? Yeah, as far as turnover is concerned, see, uh, we are under a transition now because hmm. uh, what uh, uh, the projects what we had taken on assignment from uh, Ministry of Railways, their uh, volume is coming down, while the projects what we have taken on bidding will uh, grow up. So uh, this is a, some sort of uh, uh, tapering down of one and rising of other. So uh, as far as uh, what I can be assured, uh, I mean, what I can be absolutely sure of is hmm. the uh, bottom line. Top line also right. will try to maintain, but uh, uh, as you can appreciate, there is a bit of transition here. So right. that has to be accounted for. Okay, so we will uh, wait by for stability to come by as uh, you are currently in the transition period. Uh, just a couple of more details, uh, you know, as far as your bidding portfolio is concerned, what's the kind of order inflows that you expect in the second half of this year? Uh, you have an order backlog of no, uh, nearly 67,000 odd crores. And, uh, you know, international orders, uh, that is likely to be a big catalyst for you. How much is that as a proportion of your overall mix right now? How much will that yes. be going forward, say, 12 to 18 months from here? Yes. So as far as uh, order book is concerned, as you rightly mentioned, it is around uh, 67,000 crores, which is a almost 50-50 mix of uh, both uh, projects what are on assignment from railways and what we have taken on bidding. So uh, our strike rate of whatever we have uh, projects we have been bidding has been around 35 to 40%. So our aim is to take this order book to at least one lakh crore by the end of the year. So that is the uh, that is our plan. And as far as uh, projects abroad is concerned, uh, presently we are working only in Maldives, uh, where mm -hmm. we are successfully executing a very strategically important uh, project of uh, government of India. But we are we are going in a big way as far as uh, foreign markets are uh, foreign uh, projects are concerned. We have now established mm. offices in Middle East, that is in Oman and uh, UAE, and we have now established uh, one office in South Africa. So these are the two focus areas: the Middle East and uh, Africa. That is mm. what we are aiming at, and I, I can assure you that in very near future you will be uh, de dealing with uh, many projects in both the cases because okay. we, have, we, have already, we have already done bidding mm -hmm. for one major project so, in Saudi Arabia and okay. uh, we have given expression of interest in Oman as mm -hmm. also in South Africa. So, and uh, s since we want to have a, a, a sort of permanent foothold there, so we have decided to uh, establish our offices and our offices are already established there. 
So a uh, lot of portfolio yes. expansion on foreign projects in these two areas is our focus. In addition to uh, right. Southeast Asia, Vietnam, uh, that is another area of focus. Mr. There Gaur, of how much, Mr. Gaur, how much of your overall portfolio will then be from international business is what I'm trying to get at. I mean, yes, there are a lot of countries, but as an overall part of your portfolio, how much will come from international according to you? We, we are uh, looking at to gradually raise it at least up to 40 to 50 percent of the total. Okay. That, is, uh, that is the way we have done the planning of our things. So uh, we are quite aggressive about it. And uh, one area which I forgot, I mean, just missed out was in even in Kyrgyzstan. Mm -hmm. There also we are in final stage. So uh, you will see a lot of expansion of our uh, projects portfolio abroad. And uh, it, it will be a fair mix, uh, I mean, around 40 to 50 percent in very near. 40 to 50 percent of revenues? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. No, right. I'll Mr. not say revenue, our total portfolio, total portfolio. Okay, so that would be order book? Yes, order book, order. Okay, got it. Uh, Mr. Gorgeous, since you mentioned Kyrgyzstan, that's going to be a very, very important and it's a multi-billion dollar order as well, right, opportunity. So give us some timelines first. By when do you get clarity on this? And since it's going to be a multi-billion dollar opportunity, how does the funding shape up from here? Yes. Only for this actually, order, sir. Yeah, uh, I, I entirely agree. This is actually slightly late than what we had expected. So uh, the sort of financial closure and final approvals of government is, uh, I, I mean, that is, the, that is in this stage. And last week also, we had a detailed discussion with them and uh, we are in constant touch with them. I'm a, I, actually, it should have happened by now, but uh, sometimes mm. uh, processes, because this is for the first time they are going for uh, this model in a big way. So always uh, there are uh, more discussions than this thing. So uh, once uh, this is in place, I think next projects will be faster. So uh, still I'm expecting it, it should be a matter of uh, one or two months. That is the one indication I'm getting. So, Mr. Gaur, when you join us here on CNBC TV 18 at the end of the third quarter, you'll have clarity on that. It's likely to be signed out. Absolutely. That is that is what Good. I'm hoping. What and what about funding? Since it's going to be a billion, multi-billion dollar project, how does that shape up? I mean, what kind yeah. of a plan do you all have in mind? Yeah. Uh, as far as funding is concerned, uh, the funding is uh, entirely by government of Kyrgyzstan. They have entered into financial arrangement uh, with the funds. Uh, which I would like, no, I mean, I may not state now because unless it is uh, totally finalized. So mm. as far as funding is concerned, Arminal is uh, only for the execution and the funding is being taken care of by government of Kyrgyzstan. Speaking about uh, the government, uh, you know, it's, uh, they, they did an OFS in July itself at around 119 rupees per share. Since then, the stock has moved higher, closer to around 160 rupees odd. Do you think the government would be tempted to uh, perhaps come out with uh, another value unlocking measure in their holding here? Or would they hold on and maybe next year, where all these triggers that you're talking about come by, we'll see another OFS? Your thoughts here? Yeah, as far as the present uh, disinvestment, whatever has taken place is a part of uh, the minimum share holding of the government. So next, uh, what government will do? Yes, uh, I mean, that is, uh, it is not right for me to speculate on that. Hmm. But uh, I can only say that whatever market, uh, I mean, the capitalization or whatever the market has taken, it is a manifestation of uh, confidence of market on us. The way within a very short period, we have been able to transition ourselves and have been able to take a lot of projects. And uh, not only taking a lot of projects, we have successfully executed in a very challenging manner. I can share two projects uh, for your, uh, the, uh, I mean, for the benefit Got of it. the your viewers. Yeah. One is in Indore Metro. Within one one and a, one and a half year, we have been able to uh, hand over six kilometer of track where trial has been done. So this has been based on the record. It is the fastest done ever in the India. Similarly, the Maldives project uh, has taken right. off very well and mm. uh, we have completed almost uh, 10 hectares of dredging in a period of just four, four, four and a half months. It was a very <laughs> challenging project. Not uh, so. As far as project execution and this thing is concerned, that is the main strength of Arminal. And uh, uh, just it, to 
Got it. Uh, we we uh, we are just running out of uh, time, uh, so we will yes, have we will have you back again, sir. Thank you very much for joining us. Sir, Great speaking you. with you, and uh, once again wishing you a very happy Diwali and se uh, season's greetings, sir. Thank you. Well.